Hi. Thank you, Simon. Uh, I'm going to ask you again, uh, Simon, I know your name, age, married, occupation, place of residence. Tell me a little bit about yourself. My name is Simon. Friends call me Smiley. Single, 44, and I work for the Department of Arts and Culture. What do you do there? You're in the library. Then. I'm a library assistant. We deal with books, videos, DVDs, and when the libraries come in, the librarians come in. They bring in the books from the libraries. We reshelve them, clean them, the same with the DVDs, and then we scan them on the computer, issue the books to them. The Why? drivers and the GAs deliver the books to the libraries. Why? Thank you, Simon. This period is on South African history, or South Africa then and now. And I'm going to talk about the first period, okay? okay? okay. That's during the apartheid era when we were grow when we were younger. Mm -hmm. What was it like for you during the apartheid area here in South Africa? I only arrived in South Africa in about 1982-1983. I was living in Joburg, so I didn't really know about apartheid. I didn't hear about it. Um, I only really got to hear about it in my later years when I was about 20 or 21. But I mean, you as a teenager, growing up in this, you must have seen it around you. you I mean, even as a teenager, 15, 16, you were aware of people, of yes, other race groups yes, working yes. in your house, you never yes, saw them in the streets. Yes. My question is, is, what were your views on it? Did you ever think about what, what, that, what, what that was? It never occurred to me to think about it. I mean, we were all friends, different people of different uh, races, different ethnic groups. So your parents' views at that time, you didn't, did you get to know what they were on this situation? No. I don't even think my mother knew what apartheid was. Alright, great. Even though she'd come to South Africa and she'd been here. Uh, uh, you went to school during this period? I did. I went uh, to, one in Joburg was a Jewish school, King David High School, where my mother yeah. taught. Right. Um, and I don't think there were many black people in that school at that time. And, but I got to know a lot of black friends and Indian friends later on. Never had any problems with them, never really associated apartheid with them. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Simon. Uh, what did they teach you at school? Did they teach you apartheid at school? No, they didn't. Okay. Was it right? Apartheid. Mm. When I look back and saw what apartheid was doing, it was not right. Even though it was under the guise of religion as such, it was wrong. Guys of religion, you're talking about the Afrikaans? The Afrikaans, Afrikaans yes, right. and the churches and what they... I'm not saying that they were not Christian, but the, what they believed at that time and why they did it was wrong. Okay. How did you feel and treat other people of races in that time period, and your parents as well? Did you... Did you Never had a problem. We treated them with respect, got on very well, made lots of friends. We, we even... No, we didn't... Uh, no problems. My mother didn't even treat anyone with disrespect. Did you mix with the peop with those people during that period? Yes, Other I did. People? How did, I did. Was it, wouldn't it have been difficult in that time period to mix with them because of all the laws? No. You, know, you can't no. go to the movies with them, you, you had separate movie houses. I mean, wouldn't it still have been difficult or was it easy for you? Basically, by that time, it was beginning to get closer to the time of Mandela's release when things changed in 94. And so, by that, and then the movie houses, the beaches all started becoming... And before then? Before that became? Before what? that I never really went to movies with anyone really. Uh, okay. I was still finding my feet and getting to know people, getting out of my shell. Okay, so you were introverted? Introverted, yes. Okay. yes. Um, did you fight in the war? I mean, where you weren't. You were, were you too young no, to no, fight no, no, in the war? I didn't fight in any war. I just Were you part of the army? No. I was part of the South African army. Oh, uh, yes, I was part of the South African army. And I did my national service in 1989, 1990, brought out 91. So I didn't actually go to the border and do any fighting at all. Did you Did you agree with that, going to the army? That's where I actually became a man. So And I volunteered to go there because I didn't have work, I didn't have a matric at that time. So I needed some kind of experience, uh, an income. And in the army those days, uh, they still do it today. You, When you're in the army, they pay you a certain amount. Uh, of money. Did you know why you went to war? Did I you know? Well, at that stage they didn't send us to go to war. We were just. I mean, did you know why you were going into the army? Yes. Yes, I do. Can you explain? To 
get it over and done with, basically, because in that, at that period of time it was compulsory. Okay. And men of certain ages, after 18, of any ethnic group, had to go into the army and okay. do their national service. But your, your people of other race groups didn't have to? Well, there were other people, they did, they did. Um, but they, they didn't a do lot the apartheid the area, it wasn't compulsory for blacks no, and no, no, Indians no, no. to go no. there. Uh, did you, those well, people would, to be honest, I wouldn't know because um, I didn't really go back and study the apartheid area. No so problem. Possibly. Did you, did, did you uh, so you went in because it was compulsory. Were there people that, that refused to go in that were white? Yes, there were a few people that didn't want to go in for many different reasons. They refused mm. to. Some ran away, but when they were caught, they had to uh, do what at that stage was called the sorry at that stage was called the Roy Doiby, where they had a red helmet on their head. Wherever they went, they had to run toilet. Did you you didn't uh, how did you feel about those people that refused to go? It was their choice. You didn't uh, feel you didn't you didn't want to do that. Of course not. Because of your because of the pain and punishment, or because of your, no, your no, no. feelings at the time. Basically. Six months you do your basic training, and what mm -hmm. happened was they found out that there was a little a slight defect with my heart, mm -hmm. and so I was put on light duty, so I didn't really do any heavy duty. And a lot of the other guys were a bit miffed mm -hmm. um, and started to tease me and pull pranks on me. But after a while, I made a few friends that stood up. So, no, what, yeah, what I'm trying to say, and I know I'm digging here, is what I'm trying to say the war was actually a, the white. Obviously, the whites' government's army to fight again to keep apartheid running, maybe to fight again. No, 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 no. no. That's not how you saw it. Not at all. Okay. Because at that, st at that stage, they were not fighting that war. They were going into other countries to help fight terrorism that was beginning in the Lesotho and other places that were. And who were these the terrorists? Border. I have no idea who the terrorists they were. Well, the I can ANC tell you. No. No. Well, no. As far as I didn't know, I didn't know who the terrorists were. All right. Now tell me, when they transitioned to the new system with Mandela, were you happy about this then? Going to the new government? A lot of changes took place, including in the church. But were you happy then for the transition? I didn't really know what the transition was all about. The new government, later. democracy. And once I realized what was happening and why yeah. it was happening, yes, I was very happy. Okay. Anything else on that period? That period, not now, the period at that time. Anything you want to add on that? Just to, to say to, that okay. uh, it was a good, when Mandela came out, it was for the better. Fantastic. Now the second period, today, mm. this is how we live our lives. Mm. How is South Africa for you now? Is it better or worse? There have been lots of changes for the good, and there have been some changes for not so good. Can you elaborate on that? If you think about, well, okay. For the good, people have are no longer afraid to associate with each other. There's freedom. You can talk to your neighbor, whether he's Indian, black, Hispanic, etc. And you can go to churches openly. You can go to the beach openly. For the worse, basically, it's a lot of times crime has increased. Uh, not only white people are being mugged, shot, etc. It's now the black people. Not that, that in that period of time they weren't being killed either. The, if you look at the economy, the way the government is running the country, there's a lot of things that are not right. Uh, looking around town, looking around the whole world, comparing South Africa to other places. There are a lot of things that are s slow in progress. When I went to America, they were far more advanced in their technology than South Africa was. When I went to visit Zimbabwe, they were far behind South Africa in technology. So, a lot of things progress slowly in different parts of the world. And, and some parts of the world, they progress quicker. Now, your, your mom, uh, obviously, she, she feels okay about the new South Africa. To be honest, she wasn't too happy that I was staying here because she felt that I could have a better life somewhere else overseas. Uh, but she's got used to the idea of living here. She, I don't know if she's really happy or not, but she seems to be reasonably happy. Thank you, Simon. 
Uh, employment, business today, affirmative action. Are you are you happy with this? Do you agree with it? Uh, are you angry about you know people of other color that you used to be able to get jobs in the apartheid area, you used to be first selected as a privileged person, now you don't have that anymore. How do you feel about that? Basically, um, the way I feel is that it's progress has been made in many aspects. Sometimes the the way people get in is if your brother knows somebody in the business, they will hire you. But it all boils down to how qualified you are or not, uh, whether you have the right qualification or not. There are times when you have the right qualification and someone else has the same qualification and they pick them first. No, I'm not. Is this angry. according to skin color, the skin race? Is this a race thing or are you talking about general? Do, 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 do people pick people because of now the disadvantaged races? Lately, a lot of people have seen it as because of the color of your skin, okay. which in, in many aspects is true. Not all aspects, but a lot of aspects. Okay. Do you, how do you feel about, do you mix with other race groups? And I'm going to ask you a very personal question. Seeing as you're a single person, would you marry a person of another color? Honestly, if that person had the same beliefs that I believe in, had the same level of maturity in uh, spir spiritual maturity, I would have no problem. Okay, so you're happy with that. What would you do? Is there anything you'd like to change in the New South Africa? One thing I would like to change is a lot of people, including different ethnic groups, blacks, whites, coloreds, Indians, we all still blame apartheid for the things that are going wrong. I just want to say, get out of that era. We have moved on. We are in the future now. Put that behind you and start living with your neighbor, being friendly with your neighbor, loving your neighbor, because God loved us all. Fantastic. I, I think that answers my question. Anything else on the period? Uh, I'm just trying to think of anything else. Um, no, thank you. That's it, Simon. Just hit the little red button. Thank you very much.